Hey everyone, next installment of Zooming with the Dogs, and I'd like to welcome to Chicago Mitch Glasser, who played for Sioux Falls last summer, and he'll be joining the Dogs for the first time this upcoming season. Mitch joining us from Michigan. How you doing, Mitch? Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me. So we're happy to have you. Obviously, you are from Chicago, so why don't you tell us a bit about your background? Uh, you were born and raised right in the city. Yeah, born and raised in Chicago and stayed here, played growing up, uh, played in high school in Chicago, and then went to Minnesota for college, McAllister College, where I met my wife and have really been in and around the professional game ever since after college. So what does it mean to you that now for the first time in your career, you're playing real, real close to where you, where you came from. You played with Gary a couple of years ago, but still a border crossing there. And now you're, you're right in your former backyard. Yeah, I think it's, I'm really excited to wear Chicago across my chest. That's where I grew up. And I've had the unique opportunity that we were talking about before where I've been able to represent Team Israel and playing for them in the Olympic qualifiers, playing for them in the World Baseball Classic uh, qualifiers, being able to represent Israel. So another part of my identity, uh, being Jewish American and now Israeli, but now being able to wear Chicago, the city I was born in, it's just, it's a really special thing for me to kind of towards the end of my career to kind of where it's coming to an end, be able to play in Chicago while I'm preparing for the Olympics too. Okay, so now we got to dive into the Olympic stuff because I'm talking to someone who it was supposed to be, of course, this summer, but now next summer in Tokyo, you will be an Olympian. You're part of Team Israel, and you actually made Aliyah, which means that you're an Israeli citizen, so a dual citizen of America and Israel, and uh, you're headed to the Olympics. So why don't you tell me a bit about how you got started with Team Israel and, and how it's led to this point? Sure. It all started in 2015 or tw actually 2016. The manager of the World Baseball Classic Qualifier team, Jerry Weinstein, called me after during my season in Joplin and I was having a good year and they were looking for just Jewish players because for the World Baseball Classic, you only need to be Jewish. You need to be eligible to be a citizen for that country to represent them. So I ended up playing for them in the World Baseball Classic Qualifier. That was in Brooklyn. And then coming up a couple years ago, uh, Peter Kurz, the general manager of Israel baseball, said, hey, do you want to be a part of this journey? We're going to try to qualify for the Olympics. And I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, where do I sign up? What do I have to do? And he said, well, uh, in order to play in the Olympics, you would need to become an Israeli citizen. And growing up in Chicago, I went to a Jewish day school in Chicago. So being Jewish is a big part of my identity, uh, having Israel. And so it was an honor, something that my family's really proud of, I'm really proud of, and I'm really excited now. Now I'm an Olympian and it's delayed one more year, but so July, 2021, I'll be going to Tokyo. And to qualify, you traveled all over Europe with Team Israel. Um, how many different yes. countries did you go to? So my manager, when the opportunity came up to play for Israel, I'd have to leave during my season when I was in Sioux Falls. So my first call after I heard about it was my manager, Mike Meyer, who has been one of the best managers I've ever played for, has now become a really close friend. Um, and it's special, I can call him that. And and I really respect him for the perspective he has. And I asked him, I said, hey, Mike, Israel called me. I'd have to miss maybe 15 games during the season. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but is that something that might even be possible? And Mike has this great perspective and says, this is something you're never going to get to do again in your life. This is something that you'll be able to tell your grandkids about. So absolutely, we're going to make it work in Sioux Falls. And so they made it possible where I could play my season in Sioux Falls. I went to Bulgaria, went to Lithuania all during the season. I'd fly to Europe, play in the tournament, fly back, continue playing for Sioux Falls. And at the end of the season, once the season ended, because we won the European Pool B, we advanced to Pool A to the European Championships. And that was in, uh, that was in Germany. 
We ended up finishing the top five there in the European Championships, which then brought us to Italy, Parma and Bologna. So just a wild summer last year, being able to travel, my family being able to be there a part of the way, my wife holding out for Italy, was able to join us in Italy. There was a dream for us to go to Italy together. And so it's just, we were talking about going to Parma and Bologna for our honeymoon, never got to do it. And then baseball takes us there. So wow. just baseball being a really special part of my life and taking me places that uh, in order to play baseball, it's really, really uh, exciting and I'm grateful for it. And your next stop after Rosemont is going to be Tokyo. So really going all over the world here. And I, I want you to put yourself back in the moment when you were in Italy and you qualified for the Olympics. I know going in, I mean, Israel has never made an Olympic in baseball. There's not much of a baseball, or there really isn't a rich baseball history for Team Israel. When you qualified for the Olympics and you realized, oh my goodness, we did it. What were the emotions going through your mind? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was such an incredible run with the guys on the team, the other players, and just this amazing combination of players that we didn't really know each other, but just coming together and just being the underdog throughout every game, on every tournament, and just finding ways to win. And so that's always special. And regardless of what team you play on, and that's and that's something I think that's – really cool. I related to being in Chicago. I, I played with Jordan Dean, who was a dog last year and talking we love to him about, yeah, he's amazing and amazing ball player. Um, he was my roommate on the road in Sioux Falls. We got traded to Sioux Falls on the same day. And so talking to him about the dogs and what, what Butch creates there is this really balanced team offensively and defensively, everyone having fun and the goal is to win. And that was our goal in, with Team Israel was it didn't matter what your stats were. The goal is to win. And that's what I want to do. So, I mean, the goal is, to, you know, with the dogs, win an American Association championship and also win a gold medal in the same year. That's the dream. I stole that from my buddy Zach Penprez, who wants to do that in Fargo, who's going to hopefully be playing for them. So the dogs would end up be taking – I'll be able to take that and also get the gold medal. And, and your butt heads in the North Division. Uh, Love it. You and him in Fargo. Let's transition now to your upcoming time with the dogs. You mentioned Butch. Have you been in touch with him kind of throughout the offseason? Has he courted you to Chicago? Yeah, I reached out. Um, we've been talking throughout the offseason, figuring out what would be possible and figuring out I was a free agent, figuring out where I'd be going. And it came down to between Sioux Falls and Chicago. And Chicago's been – a dream of mine ever since the dogs became a team uh it's really been a goal of mine to find a way to make it to play for the dogs and finally this has become a reality where i can live at home live with my wife and be 20 minutes of blue line right away and my family can come watch games friends can come watch games and it's really exciting for me now i think not a lot of our fans know this but i do is that last year in sioux falls you were not only a player, but also a hitting coach. Can you tell me a little bit about that dual role you had going? Yeah. Uh, my After baseball, kind of my plan after baseball is to get into coaching. And after my first year in Sioux Falls, the hitting job position came up. And so I talked to Mike, the manager, Mike Meyer, and, and said, hey, uh, would you be interested in having a player coach, kind of a, a player, but also be the hitting coach? And he said, I was just about to ask you that. So it ended up kind of being this amazing relationship where I could also be in the coach's office and playing great experience for me just to put it on my resume, but also just learn a lot under Mike and, and see the grind of not just the playing side, but the coaching side and being, being the first one in the cage every day until the last guy is done overseeing, making the groups and the organizational side of being a hitting coach and what it takes so all your players can be at the best of their ability every day. So, and that takes a lot of pressure off me too. It made it easier for me because I didn't really have to worry about myself. And so if I'm worrying about other guys and just rooting for them to succeed, uh, it takes a lot of pressure off myself, which is beneficial. And as a player, right now is an interesting time because a lot of facilities are closed you know, according to the original schedule, you would be in Rosemont right now under spring training, uh, but you're not. 
And how are you staying fresh and staying in shape for the season? Yes, uh, I've been chopping a lot of wood uh, out in Michigan. So really I'm ready to go because, yeah, you can't take swings. And I've had my wife. She's uh, she's been throwing me BP with wiffle balls from 20 feet away and uh-huh. just chucking them. Uh, playing long toss. My wife and I would go to the park and I have a bucket of balls. And so, uh, so being creative, having fun with it, because it's not a normal off season. I can't, you know, I'm not putting weight up in the gym. I have, I have dumbbells and bands and, and uh, some devices that I can use yoga, Pilates, all these different things were just trying to make the most of the off season, being creative with it and also having fun with my wife while I'm doing it too. When you say chopping wood, you got an ax there? Got an axe ready Can to I go. Can I see it? Is it, is it handy oh, right near naked. you? My wife loves reading by the fire. Uh, it's right outside. I can grab it, Mark. Yeah, yeah why do you right. grab that? I, I, I want to see your axe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, just don't, um, you know, don't, don't chop the computer camera. Although I guess that would be kind of a cool shot, the, the shattered glass. All right, we're sitting here waiting for Mitch Glasser to get his axe because – that's part of his off-season training. So let's see. And while we're waiting, I'll give you another fun fact uh, for the fans watching at home. Mitch, he talked about how excited he is to play near his hometown in Chicago and put Chicago across his chest. Out of college, he was drafted by the White Sox. So not the first baseball Chicago connection. And now it looks like He's back here with the axe. Let's see it. Well, it doesn't have a name, but it's a uh, dog red. So got that going. Perfect. Perfect. How long have you had that bad boy? Uh, it's a couple of years. It's pretty fresh. So I really only started uh, spending a lot of time with it this off season. Cause usually I can't come, uh, can't go to Michigan during the season because uh, I'm always playing somewhere. So I don't really get to, uh, come down here a lot. So this has been a benefit. My wife and I, we can go to Michigan, spend some time in the outdoors. So we're really lucky to do, be able to do that. That's awesome. But I feel like if you really want to get the lumberjack mentality, that beard's got to grow a little bit. Sam, I'm working on it. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it didn't happen overnight. This quarantine, uh, what has it been like six weeks? So yeah, something uh, like that. I don't, I don't want it to go another six weeks, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, me, you know, I, you got me beat at least because, you know, that's just how it goes. <laughs> um, hey, Mitch, you got a, any message for any Dogs fans who are watching and obviously eager for baseball to come back and, and eager to see you come into Chicago? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited to represent Chicago, play for Chicago, go to a new team, meet some new teammates and win and that's what we want to do we, I, I want to win in Chicago that's my goal when I'm there and uh, I, I think it's going to be a really fun year and hope hopefully I think last announcement by the American Association was thinking something around early July and uh, optimistic cautiously optimistic maybe to make that happen but the players were doing our best to prepare so we can put out a winning a winning team for you guys well we can't wait to get the party started and uh, make sure you bring your axe to Rosemont whenever we do. (laughs) All right, Mitch. So we are going to end this interview with a 60 second lightning round. So I'm just going to pepper you with quick rapid fire questions and you're going to have a minute to get as many in as possible. Let's do it. You ready to rumble? All righty. It's time for a lightning round with one of the new members of the dogs, Mitch Glasser. 60 seconds on the clock. Mitch, we're starting now what is the weirdest thing you've ever put on a hot dog weirdest thing i've put on a hot dog uh macaroni and cheese (laughs) what's your favorite season favorite season is the fall how do you like to prepare your eggs oh scramble what's the best invention of all time best invention of all time is the printing press Good one. Would you rather cuddle with a baby panda or a baby penguin? Ooh, baby panda. (laughs) If you were a type of food, what kind of food would you be? I would be, mm, I'd be uh, macaroni and cheese. 
<laughs> oh, you love mac and cheese. Do you have any pets? I do not. My wife and I, we just had plants. Okay, last one. Cake or pie? Pie. There we go. And your time is up. Uh, what kind of pie, by the way? Uh, I love apple pie, but I'll do blueberry. Any, I'm not a real, I'll do mostly blueberry and apple. So pretty traditional, Amer old school Fruit American. pie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very American answer. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Mitch. Appreciate it, Sam. Thanks for having me on.